Hi guys, it's Nick, and today on Relaxing Reviews, we're taking a look at a Bluetooth speaker called the Timebox Mini from a company called Divoom. Now, this is no ordinary Bluetooth speaker. Uh, it has a whole bunch of features packed into it. Uh, it is a fairly compact speaker. Uh, but its major selling point is that it's got an 11 by 11 uh, RGB LED pixel grid on the front of the speaker uh, that can display things like the time, uh, the temperature, uh, it can display alerts on your phone, like messages or social media alerts, um, it can display a graphic equalizer, uh, and it can display pixel art uh, that you can create using an app uh, as well as download from uh, Divoom's like sharing service for these little uh, uh, pixel art uh, designs uh, and animations and things like that. So um, it's got a lot of features. They've really sort of taken a maximalist approach to this fairly tiny Bluetooth speaker. Uh, and all this is on offer for 60 US dollars. And I'd like to remind people always at the start here that as we're going along looking at these features, if you think you might like to buy a Timebox Mini of your own, there is of course a purchase link down in the video description that you can click through on uh, and check it out and pick up one of your own. Uh, there, of course, is also uh, timestamps down in the video description uh, in case you'd like to jump around the review a bit or skip right to the end for my verdict to see what I think of the product. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the Timebox Mini Bluetooth speaker from Divoom. So here we have the Timebox Mini in its packaging. And the packaging looks very slick and stylish, I would say. The product featured prominently on the front here. And it has a little ad for their, their Pixel Chat, which uh, we'll have to check out and uh, a bunch of features listed down at the bottom here. This is certainly a feature-rich product. It says up here, Timebox Mini, inspired by light and sound. Around the side, it claims stunning audio with five watts output, uh, DSP processor, digital signal processor processor, which is a little bit redundant, but anyway, full acoustic speaker, I should hope so, and professional tuned. Okay. I'll have to take their word for it, although the uh, listening test should be somewhat revealing. On the back we have many different languages, uh, although at the very top here it reads in English, Divoom Timebox Mini is the most unique desktop companion with the versatile functions up its sleeves. It's a fine-tuned Bluetooth speaker, a pixel art canvas, a smart alarm, an LED lamp, also a powerful computing device. It will continue to evolve through the software updates, where it brings excitement and fun into your daily life. Okay, there's a slightly questionable English in there, but it gets the point across. Exclusive chat, one-to-one -one private chat with pixel designs, sleep aid, over 30 seconds of built-in audio and visual aids, a planner, time management for important events, 
pixel art, easy to make pixel design and animation, and notification, reminder for social media events. So they really do take the kitchen sink approach with this, uh, this speaker Tivoom is trying to pack in every possible function it can, uh, it can think of. And then around the other side here, it reads big technology in a small form. And it's got a picture of a smartphone. And then uh, it shows a bunch of functions and features here. Tech specs, really. What does it say? It says a 296 megahertz processor, 128 megabytes of flash memory, 16 million RGB colors, 121 programmable LEDs, uh, a 2500 milliamp hour battery, and uh, software updates. And then uh, has the Apple App Store and the Google Play logos indicating that it will work with both Apple devices and Android devices, which is great. I just think it's wild, too, that we're at an age, or in an age, where your Bluetooth speaker has a 300 megahertz processor. I remember when my friend first got his Pentium 2 uh, PC, and that had a 333 megahertz processor in it. And that was like, holy cow, we can play all the games. <laughs> and now it's in our, in our Bluetooth speakers. Okay, so uh, the packaging is this, this slip cover with some glossy elements and some matte elements. Uh, and then the top and bottom are this cardboard texture of the inner box. is quite pleasing. It's well designed. It doesn't look cheap. Uh, put the questionable English aside, in, anyway. Uh, and uh, it's quite functional. Yeah. I think it's got a good number of features listed on it as well. Okay. Let's, if I can, get this here slip off. Side. We have a matte black cardboard box with the Devoom branding on the front, uh, which looks really nice, very classy. presentation continues. It says time box mini here. Now how do we get this out? Looks like maybe I can punch this through. No, that's not gonna work. Okay.
Really nice heavy, heavy gauge cardboard. This is probably a little accessory package. Guess we might as well pop it open now. cable and the auxiliary cable. Exactly, exactly so. You've got a relatively short little charge cable here, USB-A on one end, micro USB on the other. This is probably USB 2, but I guess it does need to carry data for firmware updates, software updates, but um, really it's primarily a charging cable, so that's fine. I'll get the job done. And another nice little pack and an auxiliary cable. Certainly not necessary, and it does look pretty short. Maybe 12 inches or something like that. But, uh, we'll get the job done. Take a quick flip through the manual here. The most intelligent dis desktop companion, it claims. That's quite the claim. Got figures. Charging and controls. You can record voice messages. Talks about other features, the Divum app. And then learn to German. So, not a whole lot in there, but that's okay. Probably enough to get us started. As long as it explains how to pair it. That's all I really need. quite pleased by the overall visual presentation of this package, and it's very neat and tidy as well. within this soft bag. And there it is. It's a reflective front which has LEDs inside. Playback controls on the top here. inputs on the back and a, a speaker grill. Divoom on one side. And some more buttons on the other. Looks like a power button, a brightness button maybe. Overall, uh, it feels quite dense and weighty, which is nice. And uh, this plastic that you see on the sides is like a soft touch, a matte kind of feel. It's almost rubberized, but not quite. It feels good, and I'm noticing that it's doing a pretty great job of repelling fingerprints. It's not getting all 
spotty or smudgy, uh, which will serve it well, much better than glossy. Uh, it says right here, I know, you can see me. Uh, it says to front. This sticker helps to remove the mask from the screen guard. Oh, I see. So there's plastic on here. Okay, well, let's take that off. Ah. Oh, so satisfying. Appreciate it. Nice thick screen protector. Actually, you can see it's got tiny, tiny little nubbin feet, just to keep it raised off of whatever surface you might be putting it on. Just little ones. So it's a simple, minimalistic design. Uh, as I mentioned, it feels weighty and dense. And... Uh, the materials used all feel very good. The grill is plastic, but it feels pretty good. And I believe this screen is also plastic, but that's okay. feels good. Um, there's not a lot more to talk about. It has an aux in on the back here, and interestingly, actually, an aux out. So if you wanted to have a line out to another speaker, you could do that too. And of course, the USB charging in the back there. But uh, overall, really nice attention to detail throughout the presentation of this product, from the, you know, the packaging, the nice, like, you know, shiny uh, lettering and, and this black theme uh, to the actual uh, minimalist design of the speaker itself looks really good. So, uh, next up, let's check out what we can do using the Divoom app. And here we are with Divoom's app installed on my Android phone and the speaker uh, paired and turned on. You can probably tell there's a bit of flicker. Uh, that is not visible in, uh, in person, of course. That's just an artifact of the uh, camera shutter speed and the, uh, the uh, refresh rate of the LEDs, um, and I did what I could to minimize it, but you're going to see a bit of flicker, but just pretend it's not there. So uh, the initial pairing process was relatively painless. Uh, downloading the app was easy. It's just called Timebox on the Google Play Store, at least. And uh, it's about 10 megabytes in size, and the first thing it asks you to do after you've installed it is to, uh, uh, it wants you to log in. Uh, but you don't actually have to have an account. You can choose to simply log in as a guest, which is what I've done here. Um, but if you wanted to, you could make an account with Devoom, and then I suspect you can you know, save and share your designs and things like that. Um, but we're just on the, on the guest account right now. Um, the pairing process itself was easy. The app immediately started looking for the speaker to pair with, and I just turned the speaker on, and, um, and, um, 
just don't want my screen to fall asleep. I just turned the speaker on and uh, it worked just immediately, basically paired right away. So that's good. Now uh, you can see by default, the speaker shows the time. It is, yes, it is 2.55 a.m. This is the only time I can get some peace and quiet around here to record these things for you guys. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's totally worth it. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of options in the app here. Music, weather, voice message, design, animation, gallery, planner, sleep, alarm, tools, notification, and game are all sort of uh, oops, spread throughout there. Uh, there's also weather in the top corner. And uh, I guess this is pressure, atmospheric pressure. Um, there's a home button down in the bottom corner here. And then uh, let's see what this button does. Does this turn? No, no, I have no idea what this is. Welcome clock. Oh, I see. Look at that. It's changing what we're seeing. The display. Oh, some animations. Oh, that's quite lovely. Uh, it looks like a visualizer. Music visualizer. Some pixel art. The pixel frame. And we can slide back through those various. There's temperature again. There's the time. Interesting. There's a chat option down here, a discover option. Uh, the discover looks like advertising for Divoom's other products. Uh, and under the more option here, we can do some account management type stuff. Nothing super exciting. Uh, we can set a startup logo, it looks like. Uh, some LED settings as well. We can set it so that we can shake uh, to adjust the brightness. That's funny. We can adjust the light intensity. Let's see if that works in real time. Yep, appears to. Cool. Okay. So, uh, all kinds of stuff here. What does chat do for us? Uh, chat makes us log in. Well, I'm not going to be doing that because I, like I said, I haven't made an account and I don't really have anyone to chat with. So unfortunately that's going to have to go untested. But I'll show you here. Just turn that off for a second. I'll turn off the speaker. I'll turn it back on. It has a little startup animation. It's kind of cute. <laughs> And then it pairs. So it's just got that little pixel art heart. Um, it has some little audio uh, acknowledgement sounds and things like that. Okay, well, let's poke around in here a little bit more. Uh, music will save because I'll be doing uh, a listening test on my own and I will report back to you guys after this. Um, and that's because. There's really no reason for me to play music through the speaker, f you know, in the video, because you guys will just hear whatever comes out of your speakers or your headphones, and that will not be what, uh, you know, that will not be reflective of what I hear coming out of the speaker, so not super useful. The weather looks like it, uh, calling for rain for the next couple days and then sun although I don't quite know what the purpose of this is uh, because I guess it does display sort of here it shows the temperature on the clock so I don't know anyway um, design let's see what that does ah so this lets us draw our pixel art Oh, that's so cool. Check it out. See, I'm tapping on here and it's showing up on the speaker. 
that's great. How do we erase things now? Hmm. Well, let's... Well, I guess I just set them to black. Ah, there we go. You can set it all to black. You can sort of use your finger to draw. Let's do something. Oh, I see. This will do the whole thing in a certain color. That's bright. So the LEDs themselves are nice and uh, bright. Uh, the colors are pretty saturated. I like the look of them. And uh, we do have our slider down here where we can pick arbitrary colors. But let's stick with the presets for now. Uh, let's go. Let's do this here. No, we didn't think this through at all. <laughs> I can't fit, I can't fit what I want. I want to say hi guys, but not just this hi goo. So, you know, uh, it's an 11 by 11 pixel grid, which is not a lot really. Um, but if I was a more talented pixel artist, perhaps I could do something a little more interesting with it. Okay, let's try this one more time. Let's go. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm going for here. Save some space. <laughs> ASMR, kind of. It looks more like ASHR, doesn't it? That's okay. Um, but as you can see here, uh, the controls on the phone, those are reflections, uh, allow me to uh, save it uh, and uh, load designs and things like that. Uh, and you can erase everything with a touch of a button. Uh, and there's a back button here, which I guess is an undo. Oh, I don't know what that did. No, anyway. So that's nice. Uh, animation. Uh -huh. So look at, we can actually create frames of animation using this editor here, by the looks of it. And uh, it looks like we have, what is that, 4 times 3, 12 frames of animation. So that's enough to do something kind of fun. You can change the speed of the animation. Mm, gallery. Okay, so it's got a bunch of stuff saved in here as well, which is great because I'm not a talented pixel artist. So this will allow us to put some fun stuff on the phone right away. Let's do uh, one up. The Mario Mushroom. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff here. A bee. Hmm. Captain America shield. A cat. Apparently that's a cat. That's a questionable cat. Cherries. <laughs> it literally has char... It calls it Charmeleon. It's like a little Charmander so funny. I do not think they have the rights to use the name Charmander. Uh, a Google Chrome logo. Corn. Okay. A cow. Mm hmm. Goodness, there's lots. Elmo. Yeah, that looks like Elmo. Facebook logo. Hmm. Lol. Low battery logo. It's a little misleading. Uh huh. Fireflower. Oh, and a question box. Lots of cool Mario themed stuff on here. Uh, design after my own heart. 
I heart pizza. Okay. Oh, guys, guess what? Guess what? <laughs> of course there's a creeper in there. I'm not sure if these are uploaded by the community or what, but... Oh, and... YouTube. Uh, or if these are just uh, included by the manufacturer. Oh, we've got flags. <laughs> That's a, maybe the derpiest Canada flag I've ever seen, but that's all right. Uh, what is this? Animations. Okay, let's check these out. Hmm. Ballet. <laughs> that's, that's, okay. All right. A bomb. Is he gonna blow himself up? Oh my gosh, that's so grim. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's really dark. Okay, a bug. Just a crawling insect. Color heart. Hmm. Good stuff. Okay, and there's tons of those as well. Oh, rainstorm, but that's nice. Lightning. So, these animations are all very simple, but you know what? They look pretty good, and, uh, Somewhat seasonally appropriate. Jack o' lantern. Okay, well, let's leave it on. Let's leave it on uh, Rainstorm. I like that one. Um, yeah, you know, for an 11 by 11 pixel grid, these are some nice little default animations. And of course, you can make your own animations to your heart's content. I would love to make some little Pokemon sprites, other than the sort of derpy ones that are packed in here. Uh, you know, maybe based off the Gen 1 uh, list sprites for the Pokemon. Because um, those are pretty fun. So, uh, you could even animate them to kind of bounce up and down like they do in the game. You know? Good, 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 good. Uh, what else do we have here? What is... I see. My goodness. <laughs> um, what I'm looking at here is uh, different uh, sleep sounds that are programmed in. So um, you can set it so that it just plays a loop for a certain amount of time. I think you can also set these as wake up sounds on alarm. So let's uh, I'm going to turn the volume down here a little bit, and let's hear Seashore. Okay, that's actually pretty loud. So that's pretty low bit rate. The sound isn't fantastic. It sounds a bit tinny. The samples are pretty low bit rate. Campfire. I'll have to turn those down in post. I don't want it to be too loud for you, but it's got to be rain in here somewhere to go along with the hmm, thunder. Also put your own samples uh, just in your music library you know, so. and then uh, listen to them that way so all right and last but not least uh, we've got uh, some other pretty self-explanatory stuff alarm uh, notification planner that's an interesting one looks like uh, gosh I can't even imagine how this would work daytime planner Aha, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> uh, I got a bit of 
sense of humor. So at different times of the day, it will show you different icons to, I guess, remind you to do things. So wake up, wash up, breakfast, avoid exercise. Can you see that? It's a logo of a guy exercising that says no. <laughs> Work, it's got a pickaxe, lunch, napping. Oh, I wish I had napping in my in my afternoon. <laughs> Exercise, dinner, relax. So, uh, if you really want it, you could live your life by the logos, the icons presented on your Divoom Time Box Mini. That's kind of funny. You can create your own schedules, of course. And uh, let's take a look at tools. Yeah, we can do a stopwatch, calendar, scoreboard of some kind. Okay, this is one I'm actually most interested in here that I want to get to, is the game. I think there are little games that can be played on here. The arcade fun zone, it says. What have we got? Some kind of dice game. I didn't expect this review to turn into a let's play. This game evidently has no name. Oh no, it's called Pixel Racing. I also haven't had to move for like ever. <laughs> I haven't had an obstacle for ages. Oh, there it is. Nice. There's a couple other games on here. I'm not going to bother with them, but you get the idea. That's, uh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Okay. Well, uh, that is Divoom's Timebox app. It's pretty fully featured, and I love uh, that uh, LED canvas, you know, the ability to draw on your phone and have it immediately appear on the speaker. That's pretty great. And if you were more talented than I, or had more patience than I, you could put together several, or you know, up to 12 frames, it looks like, of animation, which is really cool. All right, so now that we've had a chance to look at all these exciting functions of this Bluetooth speaker, I'm going to go do my listening test to test the actual primary function of this speaker, which is, of course, to play music. And uh, I will report back, we will reconvene in just a second here, uh, and I'll talk about my impressions of the sound quality of this little thing. Uh, and then I'll do my usual summary of the, the pluses and minuses, and, uh, and conclude with my, my final thoughts. So, I'm going to go do that listening test. All right. So I have put the Timebox Mini through its musical paces and I am happy to report to you that it sounds pretty darn good. Um, really actually quite good considering the size of the thing and, uh, and the price point at which this is available at. Um, I listened to a whole bunch of stuff. I listened to rock, uh, metal, um, pop, hip hop, uh, a bit of jazz, some folk and, and classical, and some electronic music, like some dance music and stuff as well, uh, just to have a, 
a, a, a broad series of experiences listening to this thing with different uh, kinds of music. And um, what struck me is that it has a pretty balanced tone. Um, I didn't find that the trebles were harsh or anything like that. Um, and as a matter of fact, the actual speaker itself is is on the back here, the grill, I should say. So it fires out of the back. So when you have it facing you, when you're looking at the screen here, um, it does maybe sound a little bit muted. Um, when you're on axis, when you're listening from this side of the speaker, it sounds a bit sharper, which is, I mean, that's what you'd expect. That's just physics. Um, but it doesn't sound bad from the front by any stretch. Uh, the mids are pleasant. Uh, the low end is remarkably well represented for something that is like smaller than my hand. I've certainly listened to many other Bluetooth speakers that are around this size that sound much, much tinnier. Um, you're not going to get the power of a subwoofer or something like that out of this little box. Uh, it's just not feasible. But considering the size, uh, I thought it uh, acquitted itself quite admirably. Um, it sounded especially good with the more uh, acoustic instruments, so like the the guitars, uh, acoustic guitars, and the, the classical music and stuff. Um, you know, going to be missing some low end thump in your uh, like your your hip hop and your dance music and stuff like that. But uh, overall, really quite impressed with the way this little thing sounds. Uh, I didn't notice any white noise or hiss, even when the volume was cranked all the way up, or, or very, very minimal, at least, if it was present. It certainly was not distracting. Uh, and on that note, let's talk maximum volume. Uh, it gets pretty loud, uh, certainly loud enough to have on your desktop, uh, you know, where in your workspace or... Uh, on your bedside table or something like that. You know, it'll work to uh, provide music at a party in a pinch, but there are probably better options if you really want to fill a room, uh, especially if it's a noisy room. There was a bit of distortion at maximum volume when I had the speaker volume all the way up and I had the uh, Bluetooth input on my phone all the way up. Um, I did notice some distortion, especially at the low end, um, with really bassy notes. It just got a little bit mushy and vibrate-y. Um, but at more normal listening volumes, it's there was not a hint of distortion. Bluetooth reception quality actually was quite good. Uh, I didn't have a dropout on me once, and I moved around the room, which is pretty impressive, really, because uh, I find that Bluetooth connectivity is spotty at best with most devices, as a matter of fact. Um, I can't speak to battery life because I haven't charged it to full and tried to run it right down, but I will say that I just took it straight out of the box and played it for quite a long while, um, and it still has some battery left, so it seems to have reasonable endurance at least. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out here uh, is that you can actually press this this little button here. Hopefully that there you go on the side uh, to cycle through uh, different display options like temperature, uh, solid color for some reason, some kind of visualizer. Uh, this is an audio equalizer like visualizer um, and graphic art. So and you can also turn it right off uh, the display that is so. Uh, and you can long press to change the color of the display, which is kind of nice. So uh, overall, like I said, uh, pretty, pretty impressive sounding for the size. Uh, I really was quite surprised that it uh, put on such a good show and it was, you know, reasonably pleasant to listen to. So with that said, Let's uh, sort of recap uh, everything we've talked about here. I'll talk about the things that I really liked about the speaker, summarize a couple of the things I didn't like so much, and then give you my final verdict.
All right, let's sum it all up, starting with the good stuff, because I like to start on a positive note. And actually, this little speaker has an awful lot going for it. Uh, the first thing that I, I quite liked was the packaging. I thought it was uh, elegant uh, and it looked very high quality. It included the information that it needed to without being, you know, gaudy or tacky. Uh, and it was just a very, very nicely presented overall. Uh, and I think that nice presentation carries on right through to the speaker design itself. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it's this nice little minimalistic black box that's quite unassuming. It would not look out of place just on a on a shelf or on your desk uh, until that is you turn it on and you see that beautiful display. So that's another thing that I really liked that those lovely LEDs, that LED display. Uh, they are certainly quite bright. Uh, they are vibrant uh, and you can customize them in all kinds of cool ways. Um, and that is yet another strength of this speaker. Uh, which is the incredible feature richness of this thing. Uh, as you saw when we were looking at the app earlier, this speaker can do a lot of stuff. And I played around with some of it uh, on the video and, and on my own time a little bit. Wasn't able to investigate every feature, but uh, I can say that uh, I think it does uh, what it sets out to do. I think it would be uh, an excellent uh, sort of companion to have on your bedside table, for instance, that'll give you, you know, uh, alerts and, uh, you know, be your alarm clock and, and play music and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, and also look really good to boot. Uh, all these features are supported by what I think is actually a pretty good app. Um, it's not perfect, it's uh, got some quirks to it, but, uh, Everything is pretty well organized, uh, certainly like the drawing features for the pixel art, very simple, intuitive, and easy to use. Um, I didn't have any issues navigating my way around that app, so that's a big plus. And finally, uh, it sounds pretty good, especially for a speaker of this size. Uh, it's not going to blow your mind or anything like that, but uh, it sounds better than it really has any right to, uh, given how compact it is and how many other features it packs in there as well. So, uh, lots of positives to this little speaker. As for the negatives, it's actually going to be a very short list, uh, and both of them have to do with the audio quality. The first is that uh, it's lacking some punch in the low end, and this is just really a general criticism of small Bluetooth speakers. It's the physics of the matter. You can't really escape it. Uh, and I think this one did a pretty good job considering, uh, but you're going to be missing some of the really low frequencies. Uh, and if the music that you listen to is really bass heavy, you might find its performance a little bit disappointing in that regard. Uh, the second and last thing that I have to criticize is distortion at high volumes. Again, at normal listening volumes, probably not an issue, but considering that this speaker doesn't really get exceptionally loud, um, the fact that it distorts at the high end of its volume range is a little bit disappointing. Certainly not a deal breaker, but uh, it would just be nice if it didn't. <laughs> That's all. Uh, I don't have anything else to complain about with this speaker. Uh, it did everything that it advertised. Um, it looks good. It sounds good. Uh, and really, uh, there's very little to say here. Uh, it's, it's a solid little speaker. So what's my final verdict on Divoom's Timebox Mini? Well, as you may have already guessed or figured out, I like this little speaker. A lot. I think it looks good, it sounds good, it has lots of fantastic features. Can you get a better sounding speaker at this price point, the 60 US dollar price point? Yeah, for sure you could. Um, if you know sound quality is really the only thing that you care about in your Bluetooth speaker, then perhaps you're better off looking elsewhere. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's really unique, uh, that looks really lovely, uh, that has a slightly 
sort of geeky twist to it with the pixel art. You want to be able to put in your own sprites or something like that. Um, you need no, look no further than Divoom's Timebox Mini. Uh, I think it's the perfect little companion item to have uh, on your bedside table as an alarm clock. Uh, and I think it would be really great on a desk in a workspace or something like that as well. Uh, really cool product, uh, and I've really enjoyed reviewing it. So Divoom's Timebox Mini, two thumbs way up. And if you'd like to buy a Timebox Mini of your own, once again, there is, of course, a purchase link down in the video description that will take you to uh, Divoom's Amazon uh, store page. Uh, for the time box mini you can look at it some more there and make sure that it's uh, it's the right thing for you but uh, I do absolutely recommend it if you're in the market for a product like this uh, once again special thanks to Divoom for sending along the time box mini that I reviewed here today and I look so very forward to having all of you back here next time for another episode of relaxing reviews. Bye for now.